Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Very briefly, you know, one of the arguments that we continue to hear um, out there is that it's just a bad apple in the bunch. But yet, incident after incident, we're seeing uh, that there are many bad apples uh, in this bunch, those that the Conservatives are embracing time and time again. The extreme element kind of latched onto the truck convoy you supported. Well, you know what I think is interesting is that um, when there's a left-wing protest on Parliament Hill, we don't see the Liberal media going through every single name of the people who attends to try and find one person that they can disparage the whole group with. Whenever you have um, five or 10,000 people who are part of any group, you're bound to have a number who have or say unacceptable things. And they should be individually responsible for the things they say and do. So I think that it is possible to hold individually responsible anyone who says or does anything unacceptable while showing support for the hardworking, law-abiding, peace-loving truckers who are fighting for their freedom and their livelihoods and on whom we have defended, we have depended for our very existence over the last two years. Yeah. I'm curious if the minister can uh, provide his thoughts on that argument that we seem to hear quite a bit. Honourable Minister, in 30 seconds or less, please. Uh, Mr. Speaker, I want to thank my colleague for the very thoughtful question, and I think it underlines um, a pattern that we've seen from the Conservative Party in an effort to minimize the harm, the intimidation, the violence, and yes, the expressions of hate. I heard one of my colleagues uh, uh, say it just earlier tonight in the context of this take note debate. Um, we have to understand that there are certain boundaries that we do not cross as Canadians. The flying of Confederate flags, the demonstration of swastikas on our Parliament Hill is not only an affront to our values, which are articulated in the Charter, it's an affront to everyone that has survived the Holocaust, that has experienced racism, and it is an affront to who we are as Canadians, Mr. Speaker. And these are not isolated incidents. Conservative Party members can stand with people who wave swastikas. They can stand with people who wave uh, the Confederate flag. We will choose to stand with Canadians who deserve to be able to get to their jobs, who will be able to get their lives back. These illegal protests need to stop, and they will, Mr. Speaker. Speaker, I've never seen such shameful and dishonourable remarks coming from this Prime Minister. My great-grandfather flew over 30 missions over Nazi Germany. My great-great-uncle's body lies at the bottom of the English Channel. There are members of this Conservative caucus who are the descendants of victims of the Holocaust. For the Prime Minister to accuse any colleague in this House of standing with the swastika is shameful. I'm giving the Prime Minister an opportunity. I'm calling on him to unreservedly apologize for this shameful remark. The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, Canadians deserve their freedoms back. Mr. Speaker, these illegal blockades that have continued to interfere with people's livelihoods, to interfere with people's, uh, people's daily lives, uh, have... I have to interrupt the Honourable Prime Minister, so ask everyone to calm down so we can hear the calm answer. Down. The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker. The measures put forward in this uh, Emergencies Act are proportional, are responsible and, quite frankly, uh, are completely folded within the Charter of Rights and Freedoms. The steps that we are taking are important and measured to restore order and freedoms to Canadians in this country. That is exactly what we are doing. Mr. Speaker, the lack of an apology from that Prime Minister speaks volumes. I have given this Prime Minister an opportunity to retract a shameful remark where he would accuse any honourable member of this House to stand with a swastika. As I said before, we have colleagues who are the descendants of victims of the Holocaust. I'm giving the Prime Minister one more chance. Will he apologize to all members of this House? That's the right honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, 
course, the members of the Conservative Party are calling to, uh, to us to take more action over the past two weeks on this. Uh, they continued to stand with and encourage these illegal blockades. Mr. Speaker, uh, Canadians uh, are watching carefully and see exactly where the Conservative politicians who have stood with uh, those blockades uh, are standing. We will stand on the side of Canadians who deserve their lives back, who deserve their livelihoods back. Member for Sturgeon River Parkland. My apologies, Mr. Speaker. I didn't write these out. But the fact is, I don't know how any member of the government caucus can stand by this Prime Minister when he accuses honourable members of this House of standing with a swastika. I'm calling on all members of the Liberal caucus to denounce the Prime Minister. I have given him two chances to apologize. He has refused to apologize. Mr. Prime Minister, apologize. Mr. Speaker, I am a strong Jewish woman and a member of this House and a descendant of Holocaust survivors, and I have never made to, I've, it's never been singled out, and I have never been made to feel less, except for today when the Prime Minister accused me of standing with swastikas. I think he owes me an apology. I'd like an apology, and I think he owes an apology to all members of this House. Yeah.